Alright, so I'm gonna preface this video by saying that I am highly aware that my upload schedule has been, uh, relatively shit the last couple months. I've been dealing with a lot of, uh, random issues that have come up, but I hope to not treat this YouTube channel like my dad treated me and just disappear for years, and hope that I can just continue to give you guys content, albeit alongside all of the issues that I'm dealing with, but I'm gonna try my best to just kind of move past that and have a better schedule for uploading shit on YouTube since I genuinely want this to succeed and it's been a dream of mine to, you know, make this channel something that lets me live my life and do everything I want. But getting that out of the way, I would also like to remind you guys that I am doing a giveaway for a PS5 copy of the game Spider-Man 2. All you gotta do to enter is just leave a comment down below. I will be picking the winner, I believe, in the next upload, whenever that may be, knowing my schedule. It could be tomorrow, or it could be two months from now. Also, I would like to let you guys know that the code is US only, I believe. I'm not entirely sure how regions work on PlayStation. I don't know if it can be redeemed in another country, but I'm fairly certain it's a US only code, so just keep that in mind if you're trying to enter the giveaway. But anyways, with that being said and all of that out of the way, today I wanted to ask if you can beat Fallout 3 using only the railway rifle. I was born into the world and started another run for Fallout 3. Typically, I don't really do a lot of Fallout 3 runs. It's kind of something I'm not really used to. I'm not the hugest fan of Fallout 3. It's probably my least played Fallout game. Yes, that includes 1 and 2 as well, but I just generally don't really enjoy this game that much. I'm not entirely sure why, but of course I would still torture myself with it nonetheless to hopefully make you guys happy. I got to work creating the most fucked up character I could realistically make, and I was a baby. Now, I know what you're thinking, of course, for the intro section, I'm going to have to kill the rad roach, or I'm going to have to beat the game with a railway rifle as a baby. I can tell you number two is not going to happen, because this gun sucks. We'll get into that later, but the railway rifle is absolutely terrible. I sat through pretty much all of the boring introductory stuff because I was kind of forced to, I spent time just jumping around and standing on people because it was amusing, and went to the section where of course I was going to kill the rad roach with the BB gun. Now I'm sure you're wondering why I'm not just beating the game as a baby, and I'll tell you that I don't feel like making this run take 12 hours just due to the movement speed. And you know, there's plenty of other issues. All of your skills seem to work worse when you're a baby, I don't know why, but it seems like you do a lot less damage. So apparently damage is scaled to your character's height. I, I have absolutely no idea why that's a thing or how that even works, but we're just gonna pretend that it's Bethesda magic and move on. I of course let Butch uh, borrow my BB gun since I was no longer going to use it so that he could help his crack fiend of a mother and worked my way through the rest of the vault, just kind of kiting the security guards and making them fight rad roaches. Nothing in here was really too challenging and I left the vault without really any issues. I mean, the guards were more just annoying than an actual problem. Now the railway rifle is something that you can't really just obtain easily at the beginning of the game like you can with other weapons. Say, if I was doing a 10mm pistol run, I could just grab that in the vault and go with it. For the railway rifle, I have to find a schematic because it's a craftable weapon. Fallout 3 introduced a mechanic where you can pick up blueprints and craft a bunch of different things, which eventually segued into Fallout 4's entire like mod system that they have with weapons and workbenches and everything, which honestly is probably one of the best things to come out of this game. I really do enjoy the crafting system in Fallout 3 and 4. I think it was really unique, and I like the direction that they took with it in Fallout 4, but I'm getting, you know, off of topic and I need to focus on this video at hand. Of course, I could do an entire introspective video, but that's, you know, a different project that I'll maybe do eventually. We'll, we'll see about that one. Anyways, the railway rifle schematic can be found in a few different places. The one I decided to go to was a power station near, I believe, the top right of the map, as it's just kind of laying on this workbench as soon as you get inside, with a couple of the pieces that you'll need to actually craft the gun. After that, checking the wiki to give myself some information, I found that a lot of the pieces can be found in the outcast base, which generally I thought was going to be a cakewalk because I figured after, you know, talking to Protector Kasdan that I could just give them some stuff and they would let me in. It didn't go that way. For some reason, he didn't actually want my help. I guess his quest was bugged out. So I spent about 
45 minutes running around in here dying and practically killing myself just trying to find the items that I needed inside because I wasn't going to watch a YouTube video or something to find it because I'm lazy and decided that I would just slam my head against the wall and solve the problem that way. You know, like I do with pretty much every video I make. Eventually, I found the items that I needed and could actually leave, assuming that I survived long enough. It took me more than one run to get to that point, but eventually I found what I needed and could leave. I believe almost every part can be found in there except for one. I don't remember, honestly. It's been a while since I recorded the intro part for this video. I split this up into like three recordings and I did the first one like two weeks ago. So anyways, I eventually got everything that I needed, crafted the railway rifle, and had to do some console command debauchery to get ammo for it, since merchants don't actually sell railway spikes in this game, at least according to the wiki. They can pretty much only be rarely found in metal boxes throughout the game, which I'm not doing a run that way, you know? Some people get upset when I use console commands to do ammo exchanges. I did pay for the ammo with my caps though, keep that in mind. And it's just kind of something I have to do unless you guys want to watch a mostly pacifist run of Fallout 3, but that defeats the purpose of doing a weapon based run when I'm just not really killing anybody with the weapon that I'm supposed to be using. I did check merchants for a while to see if anybody would sell railway spikes, and even with some of the mods that I had, it didn't seem like anybody was actually selling them. So most of the time for this run, if you see my ammo count go up, it's because I either got really lucky and found some in a metal box, or I traded my caps for some. I will say I did end up finding probably 80 of them total throughout this run in metal boxes, which surprised me. I didn't think I was gonna find even near that many, but that's not nearly enough for this challenge. I think I went through probably seven or 800, so I would have been able to kill a 10th of the enemies that I actually did. After wandering around and doing practically nothing, I decided to go back to Megaton and just pick up some quests and sell more stuff to Moira so that I could, you know, refill my ammo. I was wondering how I was going to repair this thing, but apparently one of the mods that I have for Fallout 3 lets me craft repair kits from Fallout New Vegas using a bunch of items. So that's what I did for the majority of this run. So now if you have questions about where I got ammo or where the railway rifle's condition improved, you have both of your answers to that question. For some reason, I went on just a complete beeline to the top left of the map. I have no idea what I was doing up here. I was just kind of running around, picking up loot, and killing random enemies. It kind of surprised me how little XP you get for killing things in Fallout 3 compared to New Vegas. I feel like in New Vegas, you get like, you know, 50, 60 XP for killing an enemy, and then in Fallout 3, you get like four. And it's just kind of like, what, what's the point of me wasting ammo and killing things if I get 3 or 4 XP for every enemy that I kill? It was kind of counterintuitive. Now the railway rifle might actually look really good in some of these clips, but it's one of those guns that's kind of good early game and then just kind of sucks for the rest of the game after that. It gets really bad later on. I mean, look at this thing compared to a super mutant. It's doing practically nothing. Of course, I was skipping 95% of Fallout 3's main story because the quests are almost all just really fetch quests or just go here, dialogue this, go here, dialogue that, and I'm not really interested in doing that. So I was pretty much just brute forcing my way into Little Lamplight so that I could go to Vault 86 early and just get pretty much all of that over with. Um, but of course, this, this pretty much broke the game as I was expecting. Um, I fixed it in the ways that I knew how, which took a lot of time and effort, and I probably could have saved myself the time and effort if I would have just done the actual main quests like I was supposed to, or went to like Smith Casey's garage instead, but you know, I didn't do that. I think the main draw of the railway rifle though is the fact that it does really high limb damage, so it's one of those gimmick weapons, kind of like how Fallout New Vegas, I've done a couple videos on the guns there that are very gimmicky, like the compliance regulator for example, where it's a weapon you use for a few shots and then once you get the gimmick of the weapon to pop, you switch to something else. So for example, with the railway rifle, you would use it, pop a shot or two into a ghoul's leg or a deathclaw's leg, they would be crippled and then you would swap to your strong gun to kill them. The gun is really not meant for full combat. I had pretty much a full like set of crit stuff going and that's why it was doing so much damage because this thing did pitiful damage on non-crits or against non-crippled limbs. I mean, I was dumping 
10 plus shots sometimes into super mutants before they would die, which is just kind of ridiculous. I mean, a lot of guns are like that in Fallout 3 though, and it didn't help that this thing is very inaccurate. I mean, the sights for this thing really pissed me off, so I ended up hip firing for 90% of the game, which wasn't really fun either. I went and got the Gek myself because I'm a Chad, and then the Enclave didn't kidnap me. Now, normally you would just go get Fox and he would, you know, go with you and help clear out things and get the Gek for you, but I kind of forgot since I haven't played this game in like 400 years where, you know, the control panel was to release Fox, so I spent like 10 minutes looking for that, found it, walked Fox to the Gek, he gave it to me, and now I have two. I didn't even know this was possible, I don't even know what you would do with two of these, I don't even know if this affects the game negatively, but the Enclave did kidnap me. Not before I hit a sick dance move on them, that could be a whole album cover right there. Which I was very happy that it, you know, didn't take me five hours of console commands or resetting the game to get them to kidnap me. I was just happy to be done with that section and be moved on to the next bit of the game because it meant that something was working. Now the Enclave Bunker was pretty boring for the most part. I mean, they didn't start attacking me until like halfway through. So I just kind of ignored everything and went about my way until Colonel Autumn was just like, hey, the Vault Dweller, he's not cool, and, and then everybody started touching me inappropriately, and I didn't really appreciate that. Also, for some reason, I find that limbs get crippled way easier in Fallout 3 than they do in 4 in New Vegas. I don't know if this is just a me problem, or if I'm just forgetting something, but I feel like every five and a half seconds, I was getting either my head, arms, chest, legs, just something was getting crippled by a bullet, no matter what. Of course, on my way out of the bunker, the game crashed, because... I don't, I don't know, Fallout 3 hates me, I guess. I eventually made my way out and Fox was here just being an absolute beamer with a Gatling laser and everything was dying immediately, which makes me want to do a Gatling laser only run, but I don't even know if one spawns in Fallout 3 that can just be picked up easily. After that, it was just more cutscenes and dialogue. Fallout 3 has you sitting in place a lot with a bunch of random cutscenes, which is not really that fun to deal with, but we're going to ignore that. This is probably one of the most boring segments in the game after you've played it a hundred times. Liberty Prime, of course, just got stuck, and then my game crashed soon after because the game hates me, which was just the beginning of our issues. After I loaded back in from the crash, I was stuck in place and couldn't move, so I had to just reload the game like two more times. I eventually just went to the rotunda. Colonel Autumn wasn't aggroed to me and his guards didn't spawn in there for some reason, which, again, just starting another issue. I forced my way into the rotunda and up to Project Purity, and I couldn't actually activate it. So I reloaded a different save, went back to the Citadel, and got Sentinel Lions to actually follow me this time. She ran away in the wrong direction. I had to wait there for about 20 minutes for her to actually come inside, and then she had dialogue as if she was outside GNR. So I'm assuming she ran clear to GNR and then came back, but that did actually allow me to finish the game, and with that, I beat Fallout 3 using only the railway rifle. This run was very awkward, honestly. I think Fallout 3 just doesn't like me. We don't get along very well, but with that, I hope you guys all enjoyed the video. As always, please leave any suggestions you have down in the comments below. I appreciate each and every one of you for showing support to the channel, and I will do my best in the future to try to get this, you know, schedule back on track to give you guys some more content. As for the next video, I will give you a little hint and say that it is non-Fallout related and it's going to be on a From Software game. I'll leave it up to you to think about that and see what you think I'm gonna do. If you've got any guesses as well, leave those in the comments. Each comment is an entry as well, so uh, if you leave a comment, I'll be counting it as an entry. So pretty much anything that you comment is counted as an entry, which I'll draw at the beginning of a next video with uh, a random number generator pulled from Google so that it's, you know, shown to be fair and unbiased. But with that, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day.